and welcome to This Is. Tim Cook has pulled out his scythe and slashed down one of the few remaining products that was an absolute icon, the iPod Touch. Which means that officially, as of today, the iPod line is officially no more. Which is actually really sad because the iPod Touch second generation was absolutely the device I used to launch my channel. I borrowed $200 from my dad. I bought the iPod for literally 24 hours before I had to return it and give him the money back. And I think I made 18 videos in that 24 hours. So if you think we're just churning out horrible content now, wait till we start doing 18 <laughs> videos on a single product again. Seeing that the iPod Touch is officially no more really got us thinking to a bunch of other products that might be on the Tim Cook hit list. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we take a look at some products that Apple might just kill next, or maybe they should kill They next. should. They should absolutely kill off this next product. The Magic Mouse, comma, white. But it's $20 more for the black one. And it's the same exact mouse, FYI. It's Pro? It is the least ergonomic mouse yeah. in the history of mousing. You might as well put your hand flat on a surface and just rub it around a bunch because that's what it feels like after you have carpal tunnel. In the year of our Lord, 2022, we still have to flip over this piece of <laughs> mouse to charge it. There is not a single redeeming thing about, like, I mean, like the gestures, fine. You know what? I'd rather use an iPod Touch as a mouse than the Magic Mouse because at least I could charge that while using it. Another product that I think is truly ridiculous that they still sell is the Magic Keyboard. Now, this is a keyboard which is actually okay. It sort of reminds me of like typing on their laptops. However, they are gatekeeping one of the coolest features from the latest Macs, the Touch ID sensor. If you want to have Touch ID on a desktop Mac, too fucking bad, says Tim Cook. It's funny, Mike actually, my co-host of the highly acclaimed <laughs> Formula One podcast, The Bag Markers, Which recently, you can see right here. He recently took apart one of these keyboards to pull the Touch ID sensor out to, you know, put it in an actual keyboard you would want to use. The Touch ID sensor is great, but the downside is the fact that you cannot put it in any other product, which means that while this keyboard is fine if you're a pleb who doesn't care about the tactile surfaces your fingers interact with on a daily basis, if you want that Touch ID, it's too late. Speaking of segues, the Mac Mini Intel is another product that should go the way of the Buffalo. Wait, so Buffalo still exists. What? Yeah, they There's shouldn't of them. Do, You should say like the Dodo, the Kiwi Buffalo, bird. Buffalo, New York. How dare you? It's not my hometown, but it's close to my hometown. <laughs> no, it's your imaginary hometown. It's not a real place. It's an eighth gen processor, right? So we're what, fourth generations behind? Now, mind you, when this Mac Mini first came out, it actually was pretty decent. It made sense before the M1 came out. Now the M1 is basically better in every way. The only real reason I can think of as to why this still exists is that if you wanna buy a new Intel powered Mac that's not a Mac Pro, this is one of your only options left. So I assume it's more so for people who have to have Intel. I'm gonna tell you the real reason that this is still on their website. It's so they can look and say, look at how how expensive Intel is, but look at how affordable Apple is. Anyone else looking to buy a Mac Mini should definitely get the M1, and this thing here should go. You know what else should go? The MagSafe Duo Charger. Now, this is actually a fairly new product. On the surface, it actually seems like a fairly cool idea. On one side, you can wirelessly charge with MagSafe your device, your phone specifically, and on the other side, you can do the Apple Watch. Makes sense, right? Well, about 15 minutes after this came out, they released the newer Apple Watches that have fast charging support, and this doesn't handle it. They also have the audacity to charge you $130 for this. I actually finally upgraded to a seven not too long ago. Great watch, a lot of really good things about it. However, if you try to put this on one of the older non-fast charging uh, chargers, this will take a couple hours to charge, right? It is incredibly slow. Whereas you put it on a fast charger, it's like 45 minutes. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's good. Speaking of things that are new but not great, the MagSafe battery pack. Now I will fully admit that I have one of these. I have tried about seven different MagSafe battery chargers. Yeah. This is my favorite one. It just feels the best in my hand, but there are so many shortcomings to it. One, it's a really small capacity. Yeah, it's like what, less than a- Less than a full charge. And that's for a mini even. You could wirelessly charge it via from your phone to the, the battery. Back to the battery, but only but not, some... not with 
Not with an actual MagSafe charger. Apple used to make specific battery cases for their devices. The problem with these were that they were very expensive. They only worked on one model of phone, and they usually came out like six months after the phones, right? Mm -hmm. They made no sense. This is a much better idea in theory. However, it's $100, and while it holds on to the back of the device relatively well... It does hold on the best of any other MagSafe battery that I've tried. Which makes sense. Which is which is key to this. But there's but, a lot of weird decisions, especially yeah. considering the fact that it's hard to charge. For 100 bucks, I think Apple could do better. Speaking of things that they could do better with, how about a polishing cloth? I'm sorry, just give me one moment. I just need to drink some Boss Coffee to energize myself for this segment. I will drink my sugar-free Red Bull to energize myself for this one. Wow, the Rainbow Mountain Blend, truly, truly delightful. The polishing cloth, my friends. One of the strangest products that Apple sells for a solid $19, Tim Cook will personally deliver you a nope. cloth of the gods. He won't. He will hand it to you. Nope as you carefully wipe the nano texture glass on your $6,000 Pro Display XDR. If Tim Cook was personally handing this to me, I could justify that price. I'm gonna defend the un indefensible. There's zero justification for a $20 polishing cloth. None whatsoever. Yeah. But are all polish, like all are, are all, are all, all, are all, are all, are all. I can't, I, I'm struggling. <laughs> this is not, this is not a bit. I'm struggling to say this. Coffee? I'm gonna smack that out of your hand. How dare you, it's still delicious. All microfiber cloths are not created equally, but for this guy here, no. Don't buy this one from Apple. Matt, you know what you should buy? What should I buy? Ear pods wired, <laughs> which is a $19 headphone that they still sell. Here's the thing, none of their damn phones have a headphone jack. I would have said the iPod touch, except that is no longer continued. To be fair, you can buy the lightning version of the ear pods also for $20 on the Apple site. They're not that good a headphone. No. Like the, the ear pods have never been good. They, they used to be included in right. the box. Right. Don't buy this one. You know what you should buy? Feet for your Mac Pro. So my friends, let me tell you a little story. Once upon a time, a little boy named Tim Cook sat down for a, a deep slumber, and when he awoke, he had a vision. He should bring back the Mac Pro. However, in his dream, the Mac Pro kept escaping him. It was truly frightening to him that something on wheels could just roll away. He could design a beautiful, perfect new product, and then Johnny Ive would just push it away, and he'd be so sad. So he decided to have the team develop $300 feet for the Mac Pro. Yes, friends, that's 80 something dollars per foot to make sure that the Mac Pro doesn't just what? skididdly do away. Why are you always talking feet? You know what's not right? That Apple still sells this next product, which is the Mac Pro wheels. <laughs> it's also $700. <laughs> yeah. No one should be paying $700 for wheels like this. YouTubers love to buy the Mac Pro. No YouTuber needs the Mac Pro. Marquez does not need a Mac Pro. Wow. He doesn't. Shots fired. Yeah. The real companies that are buying this, which is like major like TV studios, to them, an extra 700 bucks for this is pennies in the bucket. So this is where companies can overcharge for yeah. stupid accessories. Mm -hmm. A company's buying, you know, maybe 10, 15 of these things across the company. No one's getting an itemized bill for that. Is it egregious for 700 bucks? Yes. Is Apple the only one who does it? Absolutely not. That's such a good point. A lot of like high-end workstations, the accessories and the little bits and bobs they add yeah. are outrageously expensive, <clears throat> right? Like you I compare the wheels to like, you know, this is the same price as an entire Mac Mini. That seems crazy. But when you get into the high-end $30,000, $40,000 systems, you're completely right. I no one pays any attention. You can go get a $100,000 HP workstation mm -hmm. right now. The RAM is triple what it should be exactly. it, when, when you're doing that. It's fake money on paper that corporations just kind of trade between each other. Everyone thinks that Apple's for nothing but consumers. It's not. This is for clickbait YouTubers. Who exactly. Make a skateboard out of a Mac Pro. Yes, but you know Shout what's not Lou. for clickbait YouTubers? Where actually all this is because we're doing it and we're gonna clickbait you into watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the XDR stand. This goes along with all the other Mac Pro accessories. It's a thousand dollar stand for the five to six thousand dollar Apple Pro Display XDR. Kind of cool design, I will give them that. I will say it is the best feeling stand I've ever used. Absolutely, it's got magnets, it's got sort of tight and adjustment and rotation and stuff, but still, um, it's a thousand dollar stand. Uh, maybe Everything I just said about the wheels and the feet. Just copy paste just copy that please. Paste. Yeah, there we go. I feel like we could say that about pretty much anything Mac Pro related. Well, but that's the thing, the Mac Pro is such a weird product. And honestly, it doesn't seem like it has a huge future. They still sell things like outdated graphics cards, like oh, 5500, so yeah, like yeah. 
which are overpriced to begin with, no one should be buying a Mac Pro right now. No. It's outdated, it's overpriced, and it's just kind of funneling everyone over to like a Mac Studio. Mm -hmm. They well. definitely want you to buy a Mac Studio yeah. right now. You know what else they want you to buy, Matt? What do they want me to buy? The Lightning to Micro USB Adapter. This is actually, fun fact, they had to make this. I believe it was the EU who mm -hmm. had a thing, a regulation saying that all devices had to be like Micro USB for a minute, and then like obviously USB-C took over. What I find hilarious about that whole story, by the time this actually gets resolved, I feel like we're gonna have like a new standard. Yeah. I actually I actually think if this was a, was a USB-C to lightning adapter, it would actually be kind of useful. Yeah. If I could just have an adapter on like the end of a cable and not have to think about the stupid lightning, I actually think it would be kind of cool. And that's the thing is you can go on Amazon for 10 bucks and buy one of those cables that has the three adapters that are all built mm -hmm. onto it and you can have whatever cable you want. This right here is the epitome of why do they still sell this? I got a story for you, Matt. So. Apple, who sells a wide variety of products, they like to make sure that you are a happy, satisfied customer. Which means that, Matt, if you want to go and buy a power adapter for your iPhone, perhaps an iPad, then they've got a multitude of choices. You know the issue with all of these? They all cost exactly $20. The fact that they still sell the five watt adapter that they put in the box with iPhones for like 10 years for $20 is absolutely egregious. Do you know how long, if you have a five watt adapter, it would take to charge like a modern iPhone from zero to 100? It's like three or four hours. It's something ridiculous. I, I know that there's some crazy person in the comments who's gonna be like, yeah, I prefer the five watt adapter because when I leave it on to charge overnight, it trickle charges it so that way the battery stays. Shut up. <laughs> no. Also, did you know that Apple still sells the Apple TV HD? So not only are they still selling this piece of Amish technology, but they're, up, they're actively updating it. Here's the thing. For $150, this is a set-top box, which not only is old and out of date, but it also only supports high definition. For only $30 more, you can get the far newer, far more powerful 4K version. Also, for like $30, you could buy like a 4K Chromecast or something, but Apple has the audacity to charge you $150 for a high def only box. This is so stupid on so many levels. Like Again, I don't... there's gonna be that guy in the comments says, well, my TV doesn't support HD, so I got this one. You know that they downscale, right? Also, this thing is old and out of date. Spending just a little bit more money will make a far better overall decision. And you don't even have to use the 4K part. Or if you really want a high def only streaming box, buy a $10 Roku. Like it's yeah. just, this is so stupid. There's so many other options than, than this guy here. You know what else you shouldn't buy, Matt? What shouldn't we buy? You should not buy a USB super drive. Now, I am 80% sure, short of some like original MagSafe one, like adapter or something, yeah. that this is the oldest product that Apple still sells. It is an $80 CD and DVD drive. This still uses USB-A, mind you. It's weird because not only is this still being sold, it's still actually readily available. You can get it at your local micro center. You can get it at pretty much any physical Apple store. And it makes sense because, you know, if you want to be able to use a disc, whatever. But the fact that they have not touched this thing in, I believe, over a decade is crazy to me. This is the one that I'm going to disagree with you on. There are still plenty of situations where people still need some sort of DVD drive. But like, do you want an $80 Apple one when you could get one that's cheaper that actually does like Blu-ray and stuff? No, you're right. You're right. I just, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments if there's an older product that Apple still sells directly on their site. This product is older than some of the people watching this video. Can we go back to that part where you said that this is older than some of our viewers? Matt, you realize that there's going to be a time in the not too distant future in which this will be older than some of our employees? I don't like that. <laughs> You know what I also don't like? The Series 3 Apple Watch. Oh boy, this thing is dumb. Released in 2017. Now the 4, 5, and 6 were all discontinued, but the 3 remains. I argue that this is the most egregious on, on the whole website. List. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Because, so I upgraded the 6 from the 3. Yeah. And the whole reason I did that was because there was literally not enough storage on the 3 to upgrade to the latest OS. Now here's the problem with that though. You can go out and buy a Series 3 right now and run into that same problem brand new. Now, the SE, for context, is only $80 more, and it is a far more up-to-date watch. Now, mind you, I used to use a Series 3. I had one back in 2017, and it was a good watch then, but the processor is old, the screen is small, and the fact that you literally can have problems updating the OS with zero things installed out of the box is absolutely ridiculous. You had to, like, basically factory reset it. Reset it when you want then, to update. Yeah. If you're in the market for one of these watches, don't cheat out for 80 bucks more get the se it's gonna last you a lot longer yep oh man i wish i had another boss coffee right now this video is long Just
No more boss coffee. The dual sense controller, my friends. So if you recall a few years ago, actually two years ago, I believe, or one year ago, or time is a flat circle, Apple started selling the dual sense controller on apple.com. Now this actually works natively on iOS, on tvOS, pretty much most Apple devices. And especially if you're using like Apple Arcade or something, it makes sense, right? What's really weird about this, it's fine to sell the DualSense. Honestly, this is the best controller that you could really get for like an iPhone or anything like that. That makes sense. They don't even sell the Xbox controller and that also works, which I find it's incredibly weird. Now the people in the comments are gonna be like, that's because Xbox sucks. Some of us like to have the joysticks offset and not down here. Ergonomically, this makes more sense to me. But let us know in the comments what you think the weirdest product that Apple still sells is. And if you're going to tell me it's the AA battery charger, well, joke's on you because they stopped selling it very sadly. Subscribe, ring a ling, the ding ling button, and let Matt know the Boss Coffee is the superior caffeinated beverage. Hashtag Team Red Bull Matt 4.